I hate microwaves. Okay, that's probably a little bit harsh, but I've really been struggling with them over the last while and specifically where to put them. So we have kitchen triangles and we have the work zone and this can really help us sort out the sink, the fridge and the range. But what about the microwave? It's often appliance we use just as much. So where do we put the dang thing? Well, in an effort to help sort myself out and so you can figure out the best layout option for your kitchen, let's talk about some of those microwave placements and the pros and cons of each of the different options. The first up is probably the most obvious option and that is on the countertop. This is a tried and true placement. We've all been there at some point in our lives, whether it's our first apartment or maybe our first home. Heck, you might even still have it sitting on the countertop and maybe you even like it there. It's easy, it doesn't require a special microwave, and we can put it in a convenient location. Well, most of the time. The downsides, it takes up a patch of usable countertop, a patch of real estate in our kitchens that we could be using or putting to better use. So eventually I find they do become a bit of a pain in the butt. The next solution is to integrate your microwave into your cabinets. And there's a couple different placements you can take advantage of. A base cabinet below the countertop. This is a great solution if you find yourself on the height challenged end of the spectrum. It's easily accessible, keeps the countertop clear, and generally keeps the sight lines of your kitchen clean. This option is something you can do after the fact because removing a large drawer front typically allows for enough space to integrate a microwave into that base cabinet. Or if you're designing right from the start, you can choose a microwave specific base cabinet. The downside comes with losing that large drawer space. If storage is already at a premium in your kitchen, or maybe you just don't have a lot of places you can add drawers, then losing a 24 or 30 inch wide drawer can be a bit of a kick in the butt. Additionally, if you have curious little hands in your home, maybe a toddler running around, this could actually be a dangerous option if the controls are easily accessible. If you're considering a below the counter placement, look for a drawer style microwave to make access more convenient. And bonus points if you can find one with hidden controls. Take this kitchen for example, where I've located a drawer style microwave in a base cabinet of the kitchen island. It's located near the breakfast pantry as well as the fridge and freezer, but still quite a ways away from the main cooking and prep area of the kitchen. The next placement is to integrate it inside a tall cabinet or with your wall ovens. This is actually one of my more preferred routes because it allows you to customize or tailor the height of that microwave to those who are actually using the kitchen. And if you go down the built-in route, it adds a certain elegance or sleekness and elevated aesthetic to your kitchen. You know, we all like to ooh and ah at our friends' kitchens who have built-in microwaves or built-in appliances. However, we should all be aware that this option does come with a few downsides. It can be hard to retrofit an older cabinet and may require a specific or custom cabinet to get the height and width just right. If you're opting for double wall ovens in your kitchen, it might be worth considering other options, as it means stealing a portion of space from another tall cabinet. Finally, make sure to have an open section of countertop nearby to avoid having to carry hot dishes all the way across the kitchen before being able to set them down. The final integrated option is to tuck your microwave somewhere inside a cabinet. Now, that's a pretty big blanket statement and it covers a wide range of cabinets, but the idea is generally the same. This is a great idea for somebody looking to relocate their microwave right now and maybe not wait for their next kitchen renovation. It's an easy DIY option, it doesn't require custom cabinets, and you can potentially even tailor the height depending on your choice of cabinet. You can even plan your new kitchen around this option. Appliance garages are becoming more and more common. This gives all of your small appliances a home while keeping them hidden away when not in use. Just keep in mind that an appliance garage will cost extra and does eat up some of your countertop space. I typically reserve appliance garages for larger kitchens where countertop space isn't at a premium or for those who want to prioritize clean lines and a lack of visual clutter. Hiding the microwave like this tucked away inside a cabinet is also a sneaky way to save a little bit of money in your renovation. Now you're not forced into buying a built-in style microwave and you can buy a standard countertop style microwave and just hide it out of the way. The downside here though, if you're a bit of a neat freak, you might not like having to clean in those extra nooks and crannies around the microwave. You know, breadcrumbs inside the cabinet as opposed to just on the countertop that can be easily wiped into the sink. Second, if you're a really heavy user, you might find that opening that cabinet door every time you wanna use the microwave just becomes bothersome. Ultimately, what I really like about all of these integrated placements is choice. You aren't forced into buying a specific type of microwave to get the placement you're after. 
all of these options can be done with either a built-in microwave or a standard countertop microwave. They just give a slightly different aesthetic or design feel in the end. All right, so let's take a look at a few examples. In this first kitchen, we're able to locate the microwave directly above the wall cabinet. Not uncommon. Now, the nice thing here is we were able to locate the cabinet at a perfect height for the homeowners while simultaneously keeping those clean lines with the rest of the kitchen. In this example, we created a nook in one of the base cabinets, so we removed one of those large base drawers, and the homeowners had to decide whether they were going to go the built-in or freestanding route. However, with this, they have options. And again, in this final kitchen, we gave the homeowner the option to place a built-in or a standard standalone microwave inside a tall cabinet. Now let's talk about everyone's favorite microwave option, the OTR. Over the range microwaves aren't the most beautiful. They certainly can't replace a sleek range hood. But before I get into the myriad of reasons why I avoid this route at all costs, let's talk about the positives. It saves space and can be budget friendly. If you're working with a kitchen tight on space, you may not have a better option. But that's about it. On the flip side, the placement is somewhat awkward over top of the range, especially if you are a family that uses the microwave a lot during meal prep. That area around the range is going to become a source of traffic jams. They also aren't the best microwaves at venting in that most options are simply set up to recirculate the air back into your home after passing it through a filter. It's hard to make an OTR look nice. They stick out like a sore thumb, aren't all that elegant looking, and can easily become a focal point. An unwanted one at that. In the end, if you find yourself going down that OTR path, either your kitchen or your design is forcing you there, find a microwave that has a matching or identical finish to that of your range. I'm not normally one to care much about matching appliances, but this is one of those exceptions. Last but not least on the list is kitchen adjacent. This includes areas like coffee bars, drink stations, or inside a butler's pantry. This helps move the microwave to a side station or a secondary prep area, helping to clear space for the primary chef. You'd be surprised at how big of a difference this can make in busy or large households where there's constantly people coming in and out of the kitchen during cook time. Placing your microwave with your coffee bar gives it a convenient location for reheating your coffee after you forget about it. However, my favorite option out of these is inside the butler's pantry. It gives you the freedom to use a countertop model situated on the countertop, but still tucked out of sight. It can also become a part of a secondary prep zone of sorts, including the coffee maker, toaster, or even a blender. This can make busy mornings before work far less stressful. Everyone isn't stepping on top of each other, trying to get out the door before work or school. And I guess there is one bonus option here, one that I have been ridiculed in the comments before for talking about, and that is getting rid of your microwave altogether. Now laugh all you want, but I've had several clients ditch their microwaves during the rebottle. Hopefully this has given you something to think about and shows you that there really is no right option when it comes to placing your microwave. The right option is what works best for you and your kitchen. It surely has helped me organize my thoughts and gives me a clearer picture of why I go about and how I go about deciding where to locate the microwave. Thanks a ton for watching another video here at HS Design Studio, and until next time, bye-bye.